Great, thank you. Um, thank all you. right, we will get started. Just a reminder that we are, this meeting is being recorded by DCTV, and our microphones are on. Um, so just mind your side conversations, because they will, um, they will show up in the recording. <clears throat> um, our first order of business is the minutes from our August 13th, 2014 meeting that were distributed to everyone. So if I could have a motion to approve the minutes of uh, August 13th. So moved. And second. A second. All right, it was Chris. Um, any additions, corrections um, to the minutes? You want to take a, a minute to take a look at them? <clears throat> I'll probably abstain because I wasn't here, but small typo on my on my name last with the S at the end. That's all. Okay. Mem members absent. All right, you've got that. Yeah, I'll get it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not the last one. You're a popular person. That happens. No. Okay. All right. Uh, we were just, Joe, we just have a motion on the table to approve the minutes and a second. And so, if you have any amendments or changes? No. Good to go. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And any opposed or any abstentions? One abstention. Great. We also have now the executive session minutes from January 17th, 2024 that were distributed to members um, at our last committee meeting. Um, we uh, reviewed the letter from the Attorney General's office um, to the complainant. Um, uh, saying that the um, since they have not heard from the complainants since we had a response to the complaint um, that they considered the matter closed and so we as a committee um, um, voted to uh, consider the matter closed and so under open meeting law once we've closed uh, executive um, an executive session matter uh, other than attorney client privilege um, which we did not have the attorney present, um, then those minutes are posted. So what I'm asking for now is we as a committee now have to uh, accept the minutes so that they then can be posted. So if I could have a motion um, to um, approve the minutes for the executive session in January 17, 2024, which is all in regards to an open meeting law complaint filed by a Mr. Higgins. Motion. Second? Second. All right, any uh, further discussion? All right, all in. Uh, I don't think I was here for that meeting, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna abstain. I wasn't okay. either. Two abstentions, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 So two abstentions and four approved. Okay, so these now can um, be Posted on our website. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, invoices. We have one invoice, right? Yeah. I think I have it. Um, <clears throat> $373.75 to GAF Engineering, and this is regarding services uh, towards the Dartmouth Dog Park, which is being developed on the grounds of the Dartmouth Regional Park. So take a look at that. And uh, Michael, when we get to you, after you've looked at it, then we, you can kind of make the motion to uh, approve payment. Great. <clears throat> In the meantime, just so folks know, um, I received the reminder from the coalition that our um, entries uh, to the, the Department of Revenue database um, deadline was coming up in September, so I took care of that. And so what, what happens every year is we, there's a database and you plug in the basic information on any projects that have been approved in the previous year. 
So we're, we're good to go there. And um, that's important because you have to kind of, if you're not in good standing, then they hold up your, your state match. But we've never had that kind of an issue. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Um, then I would like to make a motion uh, to approve the GAF engineering invoice in the amount of $373.75 for uh, services related to the Dartmouth Dog Park. A second? Second. All right, Joe. All right, any um, questions, discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous, thank you. And then we sign this and yeah. bring it back? On its okay. way back, yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh, at this time, uh, we would like to uh, entertain a motion to enter into the public hearing part of our meeting, in which we will um, hear a short presentation on the Northern, the Northern Scenic Greenway, which is a proposal um, that's been submitted for uh, CPA funding. And if I could have a motion to uh, open the public hearing. Motion. Second. Joe, second. Uh, any questions? All right, great. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Second. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so uh, before we start, kind of the basic um, ground rules of how we've done this in the past um, is um, we will hear a short presentation on the proposal that's before us. Um, we had submitted some questions, and so there'll be a response to those. Um, and then first, um, anyone who's at, in attendance here can um, be recognized by the chair. Um, if you have questions for the presenter or want to speak in support or opposition to the proposal, we're, we're interested in hearing your, uh, your view. Um, and if uh, when we uh, there are no more questions um, or comments from folks who in attendance, then I will turn this over to committee members, um, and we can uh, ask our questions. Um, and then at the end, we will close the public hearing. There's just one proposal before us. Yes, sorry. <coughs> I have in here a short recess. We may abandon that, um, but we'll continue on in our open meeting. So folks are welcome to, uh, to hang around. Great. So um, you're going to present to us, and all um, presentations and comments and things like that need to happen up here at the podium so that they can be duly recorded uh, as part of our session. Uh, would you like a PowerPoint? Um, let's see. I don't know. Yes, I don't know if there has. Yeah, I don't know. Bring the screen down. I know where it is. I don't know if I have proper connection. Yeah, and I don't know if DCTV folks are prepared to, okay. All right. to so do that. I'll just present. I actually brought some um, illustrations. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Sandra Medeiros. I'm with the South Coast Bikeway Alliance. I'm the president of the organization. I'm also a member of the Dartmouth Pathways Committee. Uh, for about um, a dozen years, we've been working on a vision of connecting <coughs> Fall River to New Bedford with pathways through Westport, Dartmouth, and New Bedford. Back in 2019, we uh, came up with the idea uh, to ha have a study to see what the best way to uh, connect communities was. So what we did was we reached out to the three communities for their CPC funds. And we were awarded $10,000 from each community. The South Coast Bikeway uh, in 2018 held their first uh, fundraiser bike ride called Pedal for the Path. We raised $5,000, which we contributed as well. That $35,000 uh, allowed us to hire Serpent. SERPA did initial studies to uh, figure out what the existing conditions were. So what were our options? Um, there were four routes that were identified. Um, actually, sorry. So 
there were four, four routes that were identified. We had the southern route, which is a complementary route of the East Coast Greenway, so going through um, South Dartmouth and Southwest Port, uh, the tip of the fort in New Bedford. Uh, it's a beautiful spot, and then going through here, um, through South Dartmouth, and then off to Westport, connecting with Route 6 um, in Far River. Uh, the next nor more northern route would be Route 6, um, so connecting uh, New Bedford to Far River on Route 6. The third is a uh, rail bed. Uh, unfortunately, our rail, rail, rail bed is still active, unlike Fairhaven and Mattapoisett, who have the luxury of a retired rail bed. They have the beautiful pathways. They did take 30 years to build some of them, but it, it, <laughs> getting the land is a little simpler. Uh, and the fourth option is the Northern Scenic Greenway, which we are uh, advocating for now. Um, originally, we were going through the woods, so there are two, there are two lines here. The uppermost one, um, you may recall, Greg, Gregory Barnes knew all the lands in Dartmouth and, and knew that there were five protected properties there. And uh, he was determined to put a walking path um, through the woods. Um, so those were our options. And then along Old Far River Road, New Plainville Road, Old Plainville Road, Sanford Road, and Bedford Road, all the way over to Mount uh, Kings Highway in New Bedford. So the existing conditions were found. So then they took it one step, we took it one step for, further, and um, SERP had applied, applied for a Mass Trails grant on our behalf using our first study as a match. So all Mass Trails grants re require a 20% match of the total project cost. So with that, we got um, more detailed analysis of the routes, and they looked at the cost, um, connectivity, um, population centers, a, a lot of different um, elements. And when it all was said and done, and public input, when all was said and done, the northern route was the preferred route. Um, so we are advocating for the support of further uh, engineering and uh, further study of the Northern Scenic Greenway route um, at this time. So we are here to ask for you to support uh, matching funds for a grant from Mass Trails uh, to bring us to pre-25% design uh, so that we would uh, be eligible for design and build grants going forward. Um, after we uh, did the second study. Uh, we got a nice $10,000 grant from Bay Coast Bank. It allowed us to hire a landscape, a landscape architect to use SERPED detailed data, uh, GIS data, um, in order to determine um, whether we had the, the uh, full road width right away um, and then what it would look like. So with the $10,000, we were uh, able to produce these concept drawings. So we have nine. We have uh, three locations in each community. The upper level is the existing con conditions, and that's uh, an image, real image. It's, uh, you can go out there and you can see you know, that location on, the, on uh, Old Far River Road. Um, not far from the uh, Dartmouth Regional Parks and Trails. Um, and you can see that uh, the road width allows for a full bike lane that's separate and divided from the roadway. Um, there was, so the, the landscape changes, as you would expect, over 13 miles. Um, but it was shown that uh, we do have the adequate right-of-way. So the next step is to um, have a more detailed engineering study. So they'll start with a flyover, um, which gives uh, uh, could tell us then, you know, this isn't going to happen or it's going to be more difficult. But the first stage of the next step would, would be a flyover. Um, and then they would go on the ground and do a, a more detailed uh, assessment. Uh, so that, that is the, the project that we wish for you to support. Do you have any questions on the project itself? All right, great. So first, I just want to check with if there anyone present who would like to speak 
on behalf, had to ask questions or anything like that. Yes, please just step up to the to the mic, identify yourself, so the sure. recording. So my name is uh, Bill Trimble, and I live on Page Street in Dartmouth, and I'm a member of the Dartmouth Pathways Committee as well, and um, I'm fully in support of this project. Uh, many people uh, are cycling today more and more all the time, and uh, just this weekend we had uh, 170 riders that uh, rode the Dartmouth Heritage Trail from uh, this from beginning of this route uh, at the Running Brook uh, Winery and then uh, starting at Highland Avenue riding the Dartmouth portion back to Running Brook. So um, there are lots and lots of cyclists who would take, a, take the opportunity to use these um, bikeways if they existed. So uh, oftentimes people think that, oh, it will bring uh, you know, crime or disruption or whatever. But I think if you look at, I run a business, uh, a bike repair business, and most of my business is in Mattapoiset and Fairhaven. Mm -hmm. And typically a lot of the people that I service their bikes say to me, oh, I ride on the bike path all the time. <clears throat> so if that sort of thing is available, then uh, people will use it. It's the... the, the um, Build it and they'll come, is the kind of thing that I like to say. So I'm fully in support of this, and I hope that uh, you will give your approval for a uh, further study of this. Thank you. Great, thank you. Anyone and, else present? Um, okay, yes, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. And, and to add, you know, like Bill said, this is uh, an attraction. It's also about connecting our communities. So we connect with pathways, but you can also ride your bike um, a short distance to the train station, uh, to your employer on Fonz Connor Road. This is a standalone project, but it's part of a more regional vision. Um, you can uh, ride your bike to any of the natural resource um, properties. So we have DNRT, Dartmouth, uh, Dartmouth Regional Parks and Trails, uh, conservation lands. Um, and also, as Bill alluded to, uh, it is an economic um, boost. Uh, people travel. To, they ride their bikes. They travel. I just came back from the Erie Canal. I spent multiple days along the route, hotels, restaurants, um, and people do that all, all across the country and, and around the world, actually. Um, we, our pedal for the path was number six um, this past weekend. Uh, we had people from all over the state and Mass and uh, Rhode Island. A lot of them had never been here before. Uh, they went to the oldest general store. They went to Pioneer Village. They got stuck at the bridge. Um, so they really had the Dartmouth experience. They love being down here. A lot of people don't know we exist. Um, it, it's a good thing for a community. A lot of people have fought against Fairhaven. Nobody's fighting against the Fairhaven bike path today. Um, so we're advocating for your support. Um, Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so this time, let me turn it over to committee folks for questions, comments. I got one. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I recall many years ago the old Westport Road bike path <coughs> resistance that we was that was there from the neighbors. You guys remember that? Bill, I think you may have even been on a board back then. I think when they were proposing the below UMass all the way down through Westport through the neck, not the neck, it's the one at the bottom. They would have, but they rent the um, oh, no. the head of the river. Head of the river. The head of the river. Yeah, the river. Yeah, yeah, the river. Yeah, I get it. Neck. Head of the river. It's a Westport, Westport thing, I guess. Right. Um, but I know there was a lot of resistance from the from the neighbors especially people who are backing out of their driveways. I'm, I'm in favor of this. I think it's a great idea. You know, I, I ride a bike, so I like it. Uh, I was in favor of the one through the woods with Greg put that through. I thought that would have been pretty cool, too, out there. Um, we can still do it. <laughs> while, no, I, I thought it was a good, a good idea. I mean, I, I like that. Uh, you know, get to the park, you can go out, mm -hmm. out in the back and actually head right up you know, to the north end of the city. Uh, I, I, the only concern that I would have is that uh, maybe the kickback from the Residents on the old on the old uh, Fall River Road, that path in front of them. Some people were 
they were concerned about backing out of their driveway and driving into a bicyclist. That was or that seems to come to mind in the um, the resistance, I guess, from the from the neighbors. So mm -hmm. just throwing that out there. I don't know if you've heard anything. Has been any talk to any of the neighbors no. out there at all? No. Okay. No. All right. I, well, I, we did speak to some of the neighbors out there. We uh, spoke with Hillcrest Alpacas. I met with her, um, Kelly, and uh, she was very supportive of the path. She says her uh, patrons, a walk there, there's no sidewalk on Old Fort River Road. Hmm. So, no sidewalk. When they pedal up that hill, they'll be walking too, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. So, you know, she, who, who goes to ice cream shops? Young people on bike or foot. And that's how they get there. And they do. They walk in the road. And Again, that, the side that you're doing, I mean, there's an industrial complex that's there, the power plant. Down further, the old um, Colbert Pines. I'm not sure there was a tractor trailer firm that was there. Um, I think the road narrows a little bit when you go over the brook. Mm -hmm. uh, down there, road narrows slightly. One of our illustration, illustrations does show that, that un, until there's a change in the, the structure, yeah. then the, the path would be split different direction on each side. That was the initial yeah. uh, mm -hmm. find, but Again, the studies are I like the I, I like the idea of the bike paths. I've been through the Mattapoisant one all the way down, um, from Fairhaven all the way down. I mean, it's, they did a great job. Yeah. Um, I like they put the net up by the golf course. That was good. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I. I think it's a great thing, but I just wanted to bring that up. Yes. That, that may be something that uh, people may question. In our presentation to the select board, um, which we did on June 17th, so you can watch the same presentation. I updated a little bit because since that presentation, uh, the Dartmouth Select Board and the Westport Select Board have voted in favor of further study of the Northern Scenic Greenway. And we're in direct com communication with the... Um, Westport planner. Um, we're here to ask for CPCs from Dartmouth. Westport's CPC schedule does not align with the Mass Trails grant, um, but just today he said we are applying. And Thursday evening they're going for like the first picture idea meeting in where um, in Westport. Um, but they have every intention to apply for CPC funds to further the study in their community. And uh, they would apply in 2026 for a Mass Trails grant or um, apply those funds to a more regional project application in 2025. Mm -hmm. So if Dartmouth, and this was his suggestion, you know, it's possible if, as other towns have worked together, if Dartmouth were to um, put an application in for a more regional project with the idea that the, the other funds would come. But an initial, a separate project just for the town of Dartmouth is uh, what we're here to apply for today uh, for CPC funds. And it's a 5.4 mile standalone project and it has merit on its own. Um, so that's where we're going. Great. Uh, Mike, yeah. Um, I was hoping maybe you could educate me a little bit on the Mass Trails grant and just so I understand, obviously this is a match that would be applied to the amount that you're applying for, the 160000 due February 1st. Is that an annual grant that they offer so it's just a one shot annually? To it's an annual that? grant and four communities along the South Coast Bikeway, which is very unusual that, that we this <coughs> South Coast region is usually doesn't get a very big piece of the pie yeah. uh, historically. Mm -hmm. uh, but four of our communities receive Mass Trails grants. Westport received one um, in 2024, and they were awarded it in June of this year. And it's going to allow them to start studying from the terminus of the Quickestan River Rail Trail along the South Watupper and Far River to take it to Sanford Road. Uh, there's no safe um, bicycle accommodations out there. They do have a stripe on Route 6. It's not comfortable. No one wants to ride on Route 6. So this will get them uh, take the path from the end of the Quickestown River Rail Trail and have a side path and a safe crossing at Sanford Road. Is the 160, what are their funding parameters? Is it based on something? Do they have funding criteria or is it just based on your project cost and they fund like a 
percentage of it? How did how did I how did we come yeah. up with the one sixty? Yeah. So so because the we total have, budget's two hundred. Right. right? Uh, so just, it's twenty percent of the total total cost of the project budget of a project. So we have a Westport um, um, bike and pedestrian committee member who actually builds bike paths for a living. So he gave us a quote. Um, and based on what we wanted and a scope, and I shared a similar uh, shared the scope with you today. It's actually a, a little less than what we asked for originally, um, but that was also this estimates back from January 2024. So but does was, mass um, the trails? I guess I'm trying to figure out like, do they have say a million dollars available? That's their pool, and they take five applications, and they say no one can ask for more than two hundred and fifty thousand. Like, what? Do, what are their parameters? Do you know? Do they have I, that, or is it just you can apply for as much as you need? Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if there's an upper okay. limit, but there's a document I can share with you that has all the awards from 2024. So the other communities down here that received money, um, Wareham received money for easement. Mm -hmm. land takings uh, for their path along Minot Avenue. Uh, Mattapoisett re received uh, funds in order to um, study their last connection from the center of town out to Industrial Drive on North Street. Um, who am I missing? Uh, Wareham, Mattapoisett, Marion. Mar Marion, I think, was the third one. Uh, thir uh, well, fourth is Westport. Uh, I believe it was Marion also got design and uh, funds. I might have that wrong. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand like the context of it. You know what I mean? Right. That's all. So, and, and, okay. and I can pull up the document and tell you, you know, some of the other town's figures. Um, it, I can get it pretty good. It's right here. Yeah. No, not necessary. I mean... I fully support it. I just, right. <laughs> I was just curious about no, how I this plays you. into the larger grant right. in general and what they provide and how much they provide and how they look at it. That's all. But from my perspective, this is a, um, a no-brainer. Yeah, so it's all about connectivity. I'm looking at 400000 500000 um, as small as 34,000 East Long Meadow, 500,000. Oh, so, so pretty sizable then. Quite, yeah, yeah quite, a, quite a range. Um, 500 ish is about the largest one I'm seeing here. Mm -hmm. Northampton, 500,000. Um, Somerville, Mystic River Watershed. Wareham. Wareham, Wareham received 500,000. Funding will be used to advance the Minot Ave shared use path by making the tinkings as easements required to construct the path. And then um, Westport, the Watchapa connector, will complete the preliminary, preliminary engineered plans for an approximate 1,254-foot multi-use trail connecting Westport to the Quickishan River Rail Trail in Far River via a former rail right of way and the project is a component of the South Coast Bikeway and will terminate at Route 6 near Old Bedford Road adjacent to bus stops and other modes of transportation. So it's all about connectivity. Um, and uh, let's see if Marion... Marion was the other one. So Marion shared use path easement phase. Again, currently at the 100% design phase, they're hoping to build 25... Uh, end of 25, early 26. Uh, for its shared use path connecting Mattapoise and Marion to Point Road, the next project phase is in a, to appraise and potentially purchase easements for the shared use path construction along an abandoned rail bed. Certain areas of the path will require easements and path and other design features. So in 2024. Oh, okay. So Bill found out that in 2024, Mass Trails Grant Program awarded $12 million in funding for 65 trail improvements across Massachusetts. Uh, for example, recreational trails typically receive a maximum of 100000 while shared-use path projects can receive up to 500000 So exactly uh, that, your that's answer. Actually, okay, There's perfect. the parameter you. you were looking that's for. That's more than information I have. Like, <laughs> right, so right. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. There's a lot you. of information on this. Yeah. Uh, but that was all on their Mass Trails site. So, yeah, I had um, a couple of questions. Um, yeah, one, just confirming some of the what we had checked in with you about you know, earlier. Um, so, 
so it sounds like this will be a Dartmouth application. The town of Dartmouth is going to be applying to the to mass trails. I know that was one thing that you all were contemplating, which way to go. So this is right. will be a Dartmouth application. Okay. We wonder if it's, you know, it would be easier as a regional if you hire one firm and they yeah. do the whole flyover of the whole section. Um, but yes, this is, okay. this is for Dartmouth at this point. And um, for who will, who will be responsible for kind of the project management of this, um, of the this work is that going to be SERPED? Is that going to be from the bike? We haven't discussed it with SERPED, um, but the South Coast Bikeway mm -hmm. could manage it. I mean, we anticipate we're hiring one firm, um, so I, I think as a group we could we could manage that. If the town of Dartmouth had the staffing levels to do it, we certainly would appreciate that. Um, we. When we received, uh, when we hired SERPED, SERPED sent us bills, and then we dispersed them to the three right. towns. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I, I believe that, you know, we are willing to do that at the South Coast Bikeway is to manage it. Okay, because I, I think that's one of the things, certainly, um, town meeting, um, if this were to go to town meeting and town meeting approved it, and then we would... Uh, end up uh, with a grant agreement, um, so we'd want to be really clear about who's managing, you know, that that determination, who's going to manage the this the funds. Mm -hmm. um, if and, if the planning department or the recreation department had the staffing levels to assist in that, you know, that would be welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that'd be one thing to just so you know to kind of work through and kind of just decide ultimately kind of determine. Um, so perhaps we should, that. as the Dartmouth Pathways Committee also, um, to yeah. have talks, yeah. meetings with the other departments. Yeah. And then this, this submission of the, the project um, services, the proposal for design services, I think satisfies kind of the breakdown of like, so how would this, what's, how these funds be used? Um, and it did have community engagement in there too. Which yes, was I nice. did see the community engagement mm -hmm. piece of it, and mm -hmm. so I think um, I think to Joe's point, um, important uh, at this point, uh, very likely important, the engagement be really kind of on a, a butter outreach because I think now mm -hmm. you all have a preferred route, and so yes. I think it's now there's clarity about where this path would go. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now I think it's clear about who's, who may have a stake in mm -hmm. its design and how it's going to work and all mm -hmm. that and stuff. So hopefully the engagement process will really focus on, on the abutters up that end of town. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, will this require any um, easements or any land taking? Because well, it looked like you were... You were showing something that worked within the current right-of-way of Old Fall River Road, is that? The measurements that SERPED did out in the field, yeah. um, and, and this is why we ended up going as a side path instead of in the woods, because yeah. SERPED advised us that this was a, a more doable project. Mm -hmm. um, it, the figures showed that, they, that we had um, adequate road width right away, mm -hmm. and that this next study will determine that. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so we hope that they would be non-existent or minimal yep. at the least, at the very, you know, very least. Mm -hmm. Do you know, um, like then, is it the town DP, probably the highway department that then would, or is it select board, who ultimately then, Proves that we're going to redesign the roadway um, to, you know, to add this piece to it. I I believe it might go to town meeting to adopt the project. Maybe Department of Public Works would have to really kind of look at it. I think. 
Okay. Is that maintain that the where, roads? That's where kind of that the res I think, responsibility probably think? lies. And they're going to farm it out to an engineering firm. So you guys right. are already hiring an engineering yeah. firm, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You may want to reach out to a Tim Bobber right. mm -hmm. and bring him on early on this. Right. Yeah. If they're going to be restriping and doing stuff, it's right. that significant amount of yes. taking out yellow lines and white lines yeah. on that road. So these uh, concept drawings, when we had them done, um, we're very mindful of the uh, cost savings and lease uh, interruption or changes to the roadway. So all the concept drawings kept the center line where it was. Oh, okay. So you're just taking you're just taking the shoulder. Yes. Correct. Yeah. The, and okay. using the right of way. Yeah. And then if the this next study is going to determine which side of the road it's on when, because mm -hmm. if there's a obstruction. Um, and it has to switch sides. It, you know, in the illustrations, we don't want the pathway to have to cross the on and on and off ramps at 195 mm -hmm. on Bedford Road. Or San, I always forget if that Bedford or Sanford. Um, so the path would be on the other side, so it's safer for the cyclists. And then it would cross after the tr the turn. It would go back. Mm -hmm. I, I just have a question because. Uh is there going to be any kind of maintenance to these road, this roadway? And if so, I, are you going to put funds aside for the maintenance? Who is going to do the maintenance? Would it be the towns expected to do it? Uh, is the bikeway, the path, going to do the maintenance? To so this is a, a very common question. And I know in Fairhaven, with their bike path, um, it's pretty much absorbed by DPW. Um, but other communities have volunteer groups that go out um, and pick up trash or, you know, it, as far as paving it, repaving it, for Haven, I don't think they've repaved it for the 13 years they've been there. And it's in the, Marble. it's in the queue now. It, it's, uh, we talk about it every meeting, but it is on the DPW agenda and they do have um, some funding from a grant to do it. Um, so the general maintenance is from the town. Oh, they, mm. I can tell you that there may or may not be some road improvements on the old far over road in the upcoming years. That's why I strongly suggest that you reach out to Tim Bobber. We've sat with him. On, he's on the, he's, on he's come to our meetings uh, back when we uh, <clears throat> were thinking about how to spend the $10,000 grant from Bay Coast Bank. I sent an email and then invited him to our, one of our meetings and said, what should we study? Which part? And he said, the whole thing. Study the whole length of Old Fargo Road. And that's what we did. And we have um, three diagrams showing uh, different locations. One is a bridge crossing. You, well, we can show you on the smaller uh, section. And then one was the larger one that uh, Bill mm -hmm. showed near the parks and trails. And then the, I believe the third one... Um, might have been a straightaway uh, LaBeouf Street, where that intersects. Is that what you call okay. it, LaBeouf? So with, um, <laughs> if that's still in Dartmouth, I could be in New Bedford at that point. Yeah, it's not so close. with this grant, um, so with the CPA funds, um, would those are going to be the match, and then in February of 25 is the application to Mass Trails. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you'll probably hear by June. June, yes. Um, is so the CPA funds will basically. There's no expenditures um, prior to that. Correct. Not till it's awarded. We won't yep. do anything until it's awarded, and it's a reimbursement grant. So we spend, and then we get reimbursed. It's typically in a situation like this, you know, one of our, our conditions on our, on our agreement would be um, that you have to have all the financing in place in order to have a release of CPA funds. Mm -hmm. So you would have the, you know, the, the commitment letter from the state and things like that, that the Mass Trails mm -hmm. approve. Okay. And Mass Trails requires our match to be in place at the time yeah. of application. At the time of application, um, yeah. okay. I, I don't think I mentioned today, but we, the South Coast Bikeway Alliance has already designated, it's in a separate fund, it's earning interest of $15,000 um, as a complimentary match mm -hmm. uh, to make up the 40000 okay. So we're asking Dartmouth for 25000 and 15000 from us. Um, and this older estimate that I 
provided with your J is a little lower, and actually your CPC would come in um, at 21,000, mm -hmm. your match. So somewhere in that range. Yeah. And this, um, this, with this funding and the mass trails and everything, uh, at the end, when that's completed, where does that, where will that bring the project? Well, we're hoping, it, they say it's pre-25%, um, but it's possible we could get to 25%, depending on, you know, what, how far the money goes, I guess, in, in the study or what they find. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how that gets from the pre-25 to the 25, but the, our engineer um, consultant said that it is possible that we could get to 25% within that budget. Okay. And then that would make us eligible for further design and engineering um, okay. funds so and put us possibly on the tip. Design or, and engineering to get to where you have bid documents and then there's construction. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so a couple more phases down the road. Yes, and we, um, there's an, a, a new source of federal funding called ATIP, <clears throat> Alternative Transportation Infrastructure, IIP, I, I can't remember all the, the letters, but um, it just uh, started this year. And there's an initiative now to, um, apply for it next year. Um, the Old Colony Metropolitan Planning District uh, asked us, South Coast Bikeway, for a letter of support for their application, which would be more on the broader region. So everything from like Brockton mm -hmm. South, including Serpit, which we are part of. Um, so there's, there are multiple ways we could go for funding. Right, great, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Great. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we have a vote to close the public hearing. Motion. Motion. And second. Thank you. Any other discussions, questions? Great. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, you know, very, we're very positive about the efforts and uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank Great. you very much, folks. <coughs> Eating, uh, sleeping, and drinking. <laughs> yeah, I suggest we skip the recess. Um, That's a good idea. And then what we want to do is take up um, the. Uh, so, what we have before us is a request for $25,000 for the Northern uh, Greenway route and for presentation. Um, had an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, the questions we had submitted, um, we've gotten answers to. So, um, thoughts? Um, before us is um, the question of making a recommendation to town meeting for CPA funds. favor of it because I think bicycling, um, <coughs> where uh, I live, we see bicycles all the time, everything, I mean, even in the winter sometimes we have bicycles mm -hmm. going by, and um, I back out of my driveway, well, I don't back out, but I, I've never, never even come close with a, with a bike, so I, I don't understand that question, but um, I'm happy to see all the bicycle people. I really am because, you know, in Europe, in all those countries, that's what they do. So, you know, when I see these people bicycle, and I always feel guilty because I should be on a bike. Right? <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I should, I should. Thank you, Joe. Um, but, yes, I, I'm in favor of giving, of approving the $25,000. I think it's good, it's, it's healthy uh, for the people that are riding and... And it's all sure a lot less noisy than the motorcycles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll agree with that. I think the safety thing, from my perspective, um, yeah. if we have a identifiable, um, harking back to my youth, we set the little green signs, you know, bike route, right. you know, we used to follow. Um, I, I think if we have an area that's identified, I think the motorists, for the most part, especially if, you know, if there's some type of a, I saw a color thing, I don't think that's going to happen, but. If there's a, uh, some type of markings, the new markings on the road, maybe the hash marks, I think that's a visual deterrent to keep vehicles out of that way. I think it'll work. Mm -hmm. You know, my, again, I remember the first time this came through with the old Westport Road, and that was there was a lot of pushback. I'm just saying that mm -hmm. from 
being there at ground zero with them. There was a lot of pushback from people, um, good and bad. I mean, I think about the, they think of the college kids on the bikes. I'm like, nah, they're, they're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. They kind of. And this uh, is more divided than a bike. This is not a bike lane. Yeah. Okay. So we. Yeah. No, no. That's why I, I don't want to have discussion. No, I'm. Sorry. No, that's what I'm saying. It's I, I. Again, I'm with you. I'll even make the motion to do it. But I, I like the idea. Basically, what somebody may have said in the audience about an identifiable area to ride your bicycle with the marks. Like that's where I'm kind of guessing, like Fonts Corner Road, um, some of the other roads in town where they have the hash marks from that. So. Mm -hmm. You want to form? Can I make that in the form of a motion, buddy, or do we finish for discussion? Um, yeah, I think what we need to do is identify. I, th I sent a template out that our typical language and printed out for myself. But um, the project template. Do we have one of those? I can, yeah. Is it, so, is it the first one, project you, one template? Yeah. So if you take a look for so just for a moment, um, our finances. Um, so I've done a chart that projected our finances. So um, based on the uh, June 30th, uh, 2024 um, res uh, reserves, um, we had in housing $172,083.60 historic uh, we had $588,984.85. We had an open space $17,079.75. And we had in unrestricted funds $1,741,732.47. Um, we did our um, set aside of um, reserves, so we added 110000 to the housing historic an open space reserve, so that, uh, and then we've made commitments in June um, of uh, 25,000 for housing and 58,000 out of unrestricted. So presently, we have in the open space reserve $127,080, so we could make um, our uh, commitment from the open space reserve, which would be my recommendation since, you know, we, we, the unrestricted gives us the leeway to spend anywhere. So we try to keep that as big as possible. So, um, Mike, can you follow the templates? Yeah, is it, um, can I, qu one question though yeah. on, the, on the template, is it the fiscal year, is, is it 24 or 25, I guess is the question. The this, is, this is all tw uh, fiscal 25? year 25. 25, okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. You want to take a stab at it? Sure. And I believe this will be to the town of Dartmouth Pathways okay. Commission. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion to see if the town, well, to add, I guess the motion is to add this language to the warrant, right? To the town. Yeah, this is going to be our warrant language, draft warrant mm -hmm. language. Yeah. And the language is to see if the town will vote to appropriate $25,000. Um, from the open space uh, um, reserve um, to the Dar Dartmouth Pathways Committee um, for the, what's the name of the project? Sorry. Northern Scenic Greenway. Oh, Northern thank you. The, no Northern, the, the Northern Scenic Greenway. Um, all in accordance with the terms and conditions of the Community Preservation Grant Agreement and referenced in the Community Preservation Fiscal Year 2025 budget, or take any action relative thereto. All right, there's a second to that? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we will submit that warrant to, uh, to the town. Um, I'm going to the Finance Committee this Thursday, I think, um, and um, We'll, we'll go over this warrant. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we have two project consultation um, requests to discuss. Um, and the first is the North Dartmouth Library. Are there folks here to talk about that? Great. If you could come up here and just you know give us a, a brief 
questions and you know uh, just what you all are thinking about doing, um, and then it's an opportunity for us to ask questions and, and have a bit of a discussion about it that hopefully gives you all some sense of, of how to proceed with this. Sure. So uh, I'm Nathan Silva I'm with Smith Mills Camp um, in, located on Tucker Road in Dartmouth. Uh, earlier this year, Sue from the Historical Commission had uh, approached us and uh, asked if we would be interested um, in helping to uh, preserve the North Dartmouth Library, uh, which currently lives, or the old North Dartmouth Library, which currently lives behind the new old Dartmouth. <laughs> 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 On Tucker Road there, you know? Um, so our organization was founded in 1907. We've been there uh, on Tucker Road since then, operating continuously every year except for one during World War II. Um, the library was built in proximity to about the same, same time frame that our camp was founded. So we like the idea of, uh, you know, the sort of the symmetry there of, of that building and our camp and how they can complement each other. Um, so we were interested in it, and uh, we are a very low-budget operation <laughs> on Tucker Road, uh, so we don't have the funds to do it. Um, so we heard this was an option that could help. And really what, we, what we're um, interested in is, is sort of partnering with the Historical Commission and, and the town to see if, if, if there's a way to make it work. Um, we don't necessarily have a need for the building um, uh, or, or the space, uh, but we're certainly, we, what we have to offer is the land, right? We're uh, located about, you know, in the same area as where the uh, library was originally uh, built. I remember when I was a kid, they moved it across Route 6 to, to where it is now. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's what we're sort of... Uh, here to pick your brain about, I guess. I would see it, or at least I see it, probably happening in a, in a few phases. One, you know, first phase would be like a feasibility study, like you know, how feasible is it to move it from where it is now to our property? What would that look like on our property? What would be a good spot for it? Um, and then uh, what would be the potential uses for it? Are there other, or other organizations in town that could use it similar to what they're doing on the South Dartmouth Library? Or is there other departments in town that have a need for um, you know, single room space. Um, so we're sort of thinking that the feasibility study could sort of flush out some of those uh, questions and see if it's something that the town would want to invest further in, uh, or if, if it would be, you know, be fitting for, you know, the idea. So, mm -hmm. and depending how that went, we you could conceivably do a you know a relocation phase and then a restoration phase. Mm -hmm. So that's generally the idea, um, and we figured we'd. Come here and pick your brain about it a little great. bit. Great. Um, questions, some thoughts about this. Oh, I, I mean, again, just in general, I think it's definitely historic preservation, so it meets, I would think, the criteria of the CPA funds. Um, at this point, you don't have really a budget because you don't know exactly what the costs are going to be, but that's not the intention of this, right, buddy? This is just to determine eligibility. Right. That's yep. it. Step one. Yep. Okay. Right. So with that, I mean, I'd be totally afar <clears throat> voting. Mm -hmm. It eligible, and then over time, I would assume, then you'd have to develop the plan and figure out how much that's going to cost and what what we would be contributing, you know, towards that. So that's mm -hmm. And just a slight wrinkle in this is we are a religious organization, so I know that there's some issues with CPC funding going towards religious mm -hmm. uh, organizations. So I know that's something that we'd have to cross. Uh, but again, just throwing that out there for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. What kind of condition is the library in now? What's the condition of the library? Just I know I talked to you, I talked to Sue a long time ago about this, but I'm just wondering. Is it, is it going to be okay to be moved? So maybe Sue could come up and just tell us. Um, going back, I'm not sure. I have to say who you Oh, Sue Gaducci, um, Historical Commission. Um, a number of years ago, now probably at least 10, we had a building mover come and look at it because we thought that a potential use for it could have been a welcome center, a town welcome center, and we were considering moving it across, back across State Road over to the landing at the Pascomancet, which we couldn't do because open space funds were used and that kind of put the squash on that. So, but in the interim, um, two years ago, the VOC came to look at it because I thought maybe there was a potential there for the VOC to 
work on it in some capacity, and they couldn't do it because of the condition of the building, not because of its poor condition, but because they don't put students in a situation where there would be um, supports and bracing and you know all that business. So they they couldn't help. Um, it's not. I think the one thing that has saved it is the slate roof. Of course, there were there is there are there are holes in some of the siding because the building had only been used for like lawnmower storage when the library, with the other library was there. So it does it need work? Yes, but the interior is not terrible. The chimney was brand new after they moved it, which was 1994. That was all repointed by Elsie Haskell's husband. Um, um, but of course it does need some work and because the furnace and the water closet was in the basement when it was on Route 6. That there was no, there's no facilities, there were no facilities to, for it to have a bathroom after they did move it. That's all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. um, any any um, signs of uh, bugs? Uh, you know, <clears throat> like powder post beetle or n not? No. No, it most of what it needs is cosmetic. It needs some the stucco needs some patching. There's some um, uh, architectural features that need replication. But aside from that, I mean, it, aside from that, <laughs> you know, and there's other work, of course. But I have no idea what something like that would cost. Thanks, Susan. You're welcome. Other questions or? Thoughts on this? I, I, I think the biggest hurdle is going to be the, is, is the kind of the public access, public use aspect of it. And, and, um, and that you kind of referenced, you know, the, um, the use of CPA funds uh, for church organizations and stuff. And, and there was a, the, um, the court has ruled uh, a few years ago, the court ruled in, uh, I think it was Acton. I always thought it was Newton, but I believe it's Acton. Um, that um, the use of CPA, f there, there was, there was a, a, um, a barrier to the use of CPA funds for the restoration of this church and the stained glass windows and things like that because the use, the primary use of the building was um, for its religious purposes. Um, and so this anti-aid amendment is, is probably one big hurdle. You know, I, I, my, I think our due diligence would be to get town council to um, kind of give us an opinion uh, before we go too far. But I think, um, <clears throat> and, and a lot of that's probably gonna hinge on how is the public going to have access to this building? Um, is the Smith Mills um, going to use the building? Uh, we ran into this with um, the Dartmouth Y, um, in which they had an application um, that was related to their community farm and the town council um, determined that we could not use CPA funds there because we couldn't assure that the building that was going to be built there, that I think was going to house both equipment for the farm, the community farm, as well as space, that they, what they were hoping to do is space it provided for education and stuff. And they felt, the town council felt those activities were too much related to the why, mm -hmm. and therefore we couldn't use um, the CPA funds there. Um, so we have to kind of get over that hurdle. I think it's probably best to to get mm -hmm. town council to weigh in early on it, and that's something we would take care of. We would ask, and, and we would take care of that. And um, uh, sorry. And maybe what we can ask is under what possible conditions could could this project go forward? But I think that might be helpful. And then that, if there is, if there's a path, 
if, um, then that's something that we go back to you all to consider, okay, do you want to do that? And I, I, hypothetically, you know, might it be that since this is a historic building that um, the public needs to, 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 to have the benefit of its preservation, the public needs to be able to access it easily and see it, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, does that mean that, you know, the, the building is placed on Tucker Road frontage that Smith of Smith Mills land? And, th and that's sort of what we were thinking no as, it's as a the right location. Because yeah. like I said, like we, we, we don't necessarily have use for it ourselves. Yeah. Um, we just have land that we could put it on. Um, and we thought, and, and this was just us spitballing as, as the ideas came up, you know, right there on Tucker Road where the public can see it right. um, and appreciate that it has been preserved. Okay, so that's um, a possibility. Would be, would be the spot. And then, yeah. you know, I, I think <clears throat> probably... Asking, and I don't know if there's a difference if, if you have to look at the whole project holistically or just the feasibility study, because I think a lot of those questions can get flushed out with someone that has a little bit more expertise than me um, determining what are the possible uses for the building or what other organizations might have use for it, um, whether it's, you know, I know in the South Dartmouth, the old South Dartmouth Library, they have the uh, cultural center that is, yeah. is using that. You know, yeah. Is there another organization like them that could have a use for this this yep. building. So, so I think, would it, yeah, would it be fair to say um, then um, when I, we asked town council to give us uh, an opinion that we can describe the the concept would be um, you know the potential for moving the prop the the building onto Smith Mills Camp uh, land with Tucker Road frontage um, for some kind of public use, but to be determined. Um, and if is that fair to Yeah, to that's, that's exactly offer what we're, those parameters to the council? That, that's sort of what we're, yeah. we're thinking in our mind as, as how we can contribute. Because okay. like I said, we, all, we, all we really have to offer is the land, yeah. right? That's, that's, all, that's all we can contribute. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're not disinterested in that. We can certainly, if there's a way to partner with the town mm -hmm. uh, or other organizations um, to make that happen, we're certainly willing to explore it. Could be the 1994 plan, the visitor center on Tucker Road. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. So I just had a question too. Um, and again, all these things now make me think. So has there been any discussion? Who owns the building right now? Is it the town that owns the building? I believe so, right? So would is your organization looking to acquire the building from the town and own the building? So in other words, who's going to have responsibility for the building? Who's going to insure the building? Who's going to... All those sorts of things are going to eventually play out down the line. And as I start to think this through, you might own the land, but you don't own the building. You know what I mean? Like things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So that's why... Yeah, we haven't, haven't gotten that. Right. The so that, these those, are things those, that need yeah, to be You're absolutely right. Out. Those are all questions okay. that we'd have to figure out. And, you know, in determining, like, you know, I agree. Right. Those would need to be figured out. But that's part of what you're asking the money for, right, is to go through these, figure that out. all of this. And I would imagine some of that stuff could come out in a feasibility study. Like, you know, if it's, you know, the town continues to own it and it's just living on our land or... or yeah. I, I don't know that we necessarily, and we'd have to talk about it. I'm, I'm just one person on the board. Oh, I hear you. So, I'm just thinking through. But I don't so know necessarily you want to pick involved, up, like you know, insurance costs and stuff Eagle, like that. Yeah, insurance, right. like all those sorts of things are popping in my head. Like you know, what I mean, just in terms of just the doing it, the mechanics of uh, you know of doing it. That's all. But well, they could they could lease the land in a long term lease. The town could lease the land. Yeah, but the may, their, the land. their thing there may be a little bit different. They've been around for a long time. They may have some things written into their charter too. Well, that's that, what they'd have to see, but yeah. that's one possibility, yeah. you know. And then the insurance cost and all would fall on the town, okay, and not make these people responsible. I mean, right, because the town's already covering those things. I would assume now, if they have the right. public-private partnership, I think that that yeah. would revert back to again whoever the original. I, I look at it, whoever the original group was to look at a visitor center. I said, what's the difference from Tucker Road to Route Six? If you got the building on the edge of the road that's available. <clears> to, <throat> For that purpose, for whatever it is, you know, for you know, I and mean, there was talk about having a fire museum up there at one time from District Three, 
I thought that they was they was they were interested in having something like that there, you know, because it was on their essentially in front of their property for years that they used it. So I like the idea, but it's just a matter of who, what, where, how, when. Now <laughs> details. Yeah, just the details. <laughs> Devils in the details. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, if you could come up here, I brought nice um, Sue. Yes, so. Um, if it, if you're taking this to town council, I'm not sure. Again, the, all of these ideas need to be flushed out. Yeah. But at one point, we had an organization come from um, down the Cape. I know that Margaret's familiar with it. It's uh, Mass Military uh, Support Foundation, Inc. And they were looking for um, uh, develop veterans housing. They've done a lot of it down in, I think it's Hyannis. And I had shown them a different property, but also was hoping that we could incorporate the library with it. Um, they may still be interested, although they like to do projects that have much, you know, more uh, units than just one or two. And, but that what they did, what they really were excited about was the fact that there's already existing veterans housing directly across the road. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, we could revisit that, mm -hmm. and it would be affordable, so mm -hmm. that would fit into mm -hmm. that category. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think the thing um, to do is is get let, let let's have town council weigh in um, just to see if there's a path mm -hmm. that isn't obstructed by this anti aid um, uh, amendment issue. Um, and then, you know, there's more devil in the details, but if, if there's a path, then, then that's kind of what this money would do. It would, you know, pay to have this, these details worked out. Um, and, you know, you do a feasibility study doesn't always mean you're guaranteed you're going to go forward with something, but you're trying to figure that out. So I think we just need to make sure that there's a path that's open and then look at the feasibility of that of that path. That sure. makes, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, great. Um, I believe that anything further no, on this? No. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, we have the the other um, eligibility consultation request is the Agricultural Land Preservation Fund. <clears throat> is there someone to speak to that? Okay, so now I'm putting on my other hat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's been since the last time we had, uh, when we established the Ag Preservation Trust Fund was 1998. And we have pretty much exhausted all of those funds with there's a there's a, a there's under two hundred thousand left. I think it's one hundred and eighty something um, left to be spent. And I think we've been very prudent in how we've spent those funds. I believe that we've protected over five hundred acres of farmland. Um, but we would like to have, without going th through that whole process of a two and a half override, we think that this might work out better in terms of leveraging funding from the state um, and the federal government for additional farmland protection funds. Great. Um, questions from folks? Yes. I have no idea because I wasn't involved in that at all. How much funding did you get originally? 2.75. Million. And who did you get that from? The town. The two and a half override. Yep. The two and a half override. Correct. Okay. Thanks, Susan. I, did, I wasn't aware of that. And what you, what you spent those funds helping, assisting people buy farms? Is that We've, they, all of those, all those projects have either come under the APR program um, or they're, the smaller resources are now protected by the, um, <clears throat> by the Farm Bureau. Thank you, Susan. Welcome. As 
other questions? So just so I understand, the use of these funds would, Sue, would be used to leverage additional funds? Correct, So yes. almost like a match like we were talking about earlier with the bikeway kind of thing? Yes, and that's what we did with the, um, the Ag Preservation Trust money. Mm -hmm. You know, the, because at the time it was, very, it was really difficult to uh, compete with the, the western part of the state because the cost of real estate was so much lower. So in order for us to actually be able to come to the table and say, well, we can, we can contribute, so as soon as we did that, it, it brought in, a, it brought in um, a significant amount of money, although we still did use CPC to stretch those funds as well. Uh, they're similar to like the bike path thing where you have to have like a 20% match or a certain percentage of match. Do, the, do they look for that or... Um, or is it not as prescribed? It's not as prescribed. Okay, that's good. Flexibility. One more question, if I may, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair. Uh, if, if you would, if we, you know, whatever amount we were to give you, um, that money, could we have uh, restrictions on how that money's being used in terms of how you um, distribute the money uh, to different farms and uh, so that a 61A yeah, would be yeah. a little stricter than we've had some problems in the past. I, know, I knew where you were going with that, yeah, and I think we, we need do. to, yeah, and we really do need to. So, I mean, if we were to do that, then I know I, for one, want restrictions. <clears throat> Both on how. Right, yes, know. yep. Okay. How about how uh, ultimately about do you for something a fund like this to be feasible? It's, it'll be a matching fund, but um, what kind of dollar amount are you thinking ultimately that a useful fund? You know, you you think it needs to be back to that two point something million range um, to be feasible to be able to respond to projects? I think that's one of the advantages of, of a fund like this is that, um, well, I think, so actually, let me correct myself. Does, were you able to move or commit funds outside of town meeting, or do you always have to come back to town meeting? Um, we, the Ag Preservation Trust was was not set up that way right. okay. so that we had the all we had to do was get the approval of the finance committee Got it. and we had the the preservation trust has a member of the fincom on it yeah. so if you if you wanted to fold these two in together somehow because we've already got the 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 boiler the uh boilerplate so to speak um mm -hmm. maybe there's a way to do that because that, that is the, the advantage. You don't have to wait for town meetings, so you can be much more responsive. Um, but that would be then the, the question is the mechanics of the right. existing preservation trust um, work uh, or with CPA funds. Uh, there's lots of examples, so I see eligible wise, there's lots of examples across the state of CPA funds. Um, going to trusts, land trusts, housing trusts, and things like that. Um, there are, you know, highly recommended some monitoring and reporting requirements. Um, and I think we've we've worked with the town about getting annual summary of the housing trust funds that we've um, kind of provided the town. So we get an annual kind of figures from the town about what's happening with that money. So I think it's just looking at trying to, it, the details of that. Um, <clears throat> and how do you commingle CPC with old ag trust funds if we put restrictions on it? Yeah, so that would be, that would be part of what would have to be kind of spelled out, um, how the accounting is kept separate and how these funds would have certain parameters for use versus other funds that the preservation trust might might have um, 
is there something that like if you decide on X, that money gets set aside but doesn't get put into that fund until that current fund is depleted? <clears throat> Say that again, like there's monies in the fund, there's X amount of dollars, it. whatever it is. If they have projects going on, we augment that, but we don't physically commingle those funds until the old was it 1989? 98. 98. 98. 98. All right, it's late. <laughs> 98 funds. Once the 98 funds are depleted, you've got the backup plan there, you know, pushing up against it. Once that money's gone, then, then it's a pure CPC funding. It's not this kind of commingling of, of monies. I'm just thinking outside, you know, that way it kind of keeps it pure that way. That way there's no, if we have restrictions on what we want, so we don't have any more debacles like happened mm -hmm. a while ago, um, there's more control over it. And Sue's here and Sue's honorable, but if you get somebody in here that moves into it, into that position that may not have the history that she has and things start going sideways, you know, I'm just, again, thinking down the road, not now, I'm just yep. thinking down the road yeah, when we're all well retired for, away from here. Oh, yep. oh, oh. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's possible to, to do that kind of accounting. I don't think that's a difficult thing to do is just it would have to be spelled out and stuff um, I think what you see um, around the state is uh, well, typical um, would be that a CPC has decided to capitalize a housing or a land trust and what you'll see is a, they'll they'll make multi they'll, it's a multi-year commitment so you'll see some towns like Bedford will make like Two hundred thousand dollars a year to the housing uh, trust in Bedford, mm -hmm. and that's just that's a multi-year, and they they spell it out in their plan for the next five years, okay. two hundred thousand, and um, I think that's probably what we would be looking at because that really makes it then feasible. So you you know you're gonna one it, it's a reliable stream over three or five years they can plan that with. they can plan with. And say, yeah. So we have, you know, three hundred thousand this year, three hundred thousand in the next three years. It, it can be planned, right. mm -hmm. um, and we can plan cash flow, kind of thing. Um, so it what are they looking for? for something like that. How much money are they looking for? I'm sorry. How much money are you looking for? I I really haven't given that a whole lot of thought. Right. I mean, I mean, it would it would certainly <clears throat> be a start, but if we could look forward to a certain amount every year that would be that would be helpful because in spite of the fact that we had 2.75 million I mean and that was back in the day when a house lot was I don't know 150,000 not even that <laughs> not even that so I mean now that money isn't going to go nearly as far so but is this something also that I remember everybody a few meetings ago when we had mm -hmm. um, that young couple with a farm? Who was you? No. Which but, young but, couple but, with a farm? Was it about the house, about being able to buy the farm? They couldn't live on the farm. Remember that? We, we, we talked about something about. It's every farm. Maybe yeah. there was some way yeah. that they could right. call we, That was our joint meeting with the Ag Commission. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember them saying that that was the big thing, like the housing was the big thing, the yeah. way to keep people. And I thought that we were talking about. Maybe that's what I thought this was about, that they were going to have, have money set aside that for, for the farms to be able to have a set housing fund, affordable housing for farmers for, for the farm. Do you I think know? that's a separate conversation. A, a very okay, all right, disregard. An important but separate Okay, I wasn't sure if, there was, if this was kind of... And again. there, I mean, that, has, that was somewhat addressed with the Ag Preservation Trust because right. we had somebody that actually was able to tie the farmhouse to the farmland. To me, it was a shiny red ball that I thought that this was a this. All right, you keep on going, sorry. <laughs> I wonder if we could um, have uh, a little, like, subcommittee that would work on this for the next few months because it really is getting to the detail part. Mm -hmm. So it really is looking like, so what's the, how's the Ag Preservation Trust set up now? You know, what what do it does it have bylaws? You know, what what does that yeah. what does that look like? Our, is is you know, and then what would be the adjustments that might be necessary 
if CPA funds were to flow to the Preservation Trust. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to create a whole other kind of entity if the town already has this thing. Um, and um, But we had to work out those kind of details about how the fit. There are examples of from across the state of how CPCs are doing this. So I think it might be looking, you know, getting a couple of examples from some of the other land trusts um, and CPCs, but looking at the Ag Preservation Trust and then um, are there any other stipulations that would go with the CPA funds? And I know that's a particularly sensitive topic um, because I know from our Ag Commission joint meeting, we've got to be really careful about putting up guardrails that could backfire in terms of the feasibility of farming. So, you know, mushroom farmers have buildings <laughs> um, and things like that. So you have to be careful with the language um, um, because it could really kind of um, undermine the feasibility of farming in the future. So, stuff like that. But didn't we decide, uh, we talked about whether uh, when the money is given to uh, farmers that we um, perhaps see what the agreement is uh, and, and be considered in the agreement as they're writing this with the farmer because of past histories? Didn't we talk about something like that, Susan? Mm -hmm. I think we did. So, I think that would be one of the things that I would want to see that we were given some kind of, uh, mm -hmm. an, not, you know, this is what we're planning to do. Can you help us? Is there anything else we should put in this uh, agreement? Because uh, we certainly want to give money to the farmers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so the key thing is is uh, what we would be, what we're being asked to do is consider uh, capitalizing like the Ag Preservation Trust. So in doing so, we are also giving them the authority and discretion to use the funds as they see fit within the parameters of CPA. Uh, that come with the funding. Um, so so we, won't, we wouldn't be involved in any project-by-project project conversation. Um, the trust, the ag trust would be doing that, talking to farmers and working out deals and things like that. But what the Ag Trust would have to do is honor whatever the conditions are on how CPA funds can be used. And that's, that's where, are there boundaries to that? Are there limits or restrictions? That's where we come in and say, yeah, you, you know, you can, you, you can, you can have $300,000 a year for the next five years, but that, those funds can't be used in these particular ways. Mm -hmm. I think and yeah. can and others. So okay. that and that's something we'd have right. to work we'll out. Work and, out. Yeah. So would we then just have to monitor it then in a, in a way, just kind of right? Like, you know, and then we would get sure, like to audit, a report, make sure that things how are the done funds correctly. used. Okay. You know, yeah. what's the balance? Mm -hmm. What projects got funded with it? We voted yes. that in a few months ago, but they have to report. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that kind of thing. it would fit that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in other words, so you, what you're saying to me is that if uh, they decided to give us a million and a half to buy a, a farm, uh, then we, we couldn't have any say on how it's written up. Right. They would figure that out, but they could only use the funds in the way we have agreed that they could be used. Okay, so in other words, when, if this happens, then we have to... Sit down and really figure out what figure out what yeah. we want. Which, what would that look like? Yeah. What are, What are the what conditions? The yes. And those are the conditions that would show okay. up in the agreement, right. the MOU. Okay. Um, I mean, we, we have we think they need what we want to do, but they're also going to look at them and say some of these may not work well for them. So I think there's going to have to be right. two 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 programs, and then some way we're going to have to kind of sit down and hash out what's actually feasible. You know, what falls. It stays within our guidelines, and it's actually useful to what right. the Ag Council wants to yeah. Ag and trust wants I to mean, do. not all farms are the same, so it right. may have to be a case-by-case. Well, we by learned case. that here in one of the meetings. We got that already. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. well aware. So I wonder if, you know, I think because there's some detail work, um, I, 
I for one be a little reticent going to town meeting with mm. something that we weren't sure exactly what it was right. that we're asking to fund. Um, and, and just I think our kind of due diligence with town meeting, you know, I think we need to continue to try to go to town meeting with the best thought through um, uh, projects. Um, so I think this is the period of time to try to figure that, some of this detail out. But it's too much detail for like a committee meeting. So I'm wondering if it's possible um, if there are some volunteers and maybe if it makes sense to have a joint kind of subcommittee of some folks from Ag Commission and CPC and look at and does that are there people still named to the preservation trust it's on our website town website okay and obviously I I'm sure that we haven't had a meeting in probably three years so yeah but I there's there's there are people there's we names. know we know what the represent what it looks what the representation list looks like yes yeah. So I wonder if it's a three-way working group between CPC, Rep, and Ag Commission, and the Preservation Trust. I'll make a motion for our vice chair, who's not here today, to be on that board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I volunteer. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Um, the two of them, I think. To, to try to work through some of the, the detail of how, could, how would this work, mm -hmm. what would the terms be. You know, it would come back to us in, in, in a draft. And then we can kind of work through that. But, but you mentioned Bedford though as an example. Yeah. Do you have a contact there, or do you, or do you, is there a path for us to contact somebody at the state level who can give us some guidance as to? They're what, probably what are yeah, the trust type funds. Yeah, being used they probably way? are, and I'd be happy to to, one, right? to, ask that to participate in the work group. But, um, I don't have the expertise, but I'd be happy to participate in the work group to try to. If we can find out what somebody else is doing, maybe we don't have right. to reinvent the wheel. We can exactly. kind of learn from their save, mistakes, save us all. you know, Time. kind of thing. I, yeah. I think if we, if we come back with something that makes a lot of sense, I think we have a lot of concerns and questions because that's what we do. But I think if they get together, the subcommittee, and it's not going to take long, I'm sure, mm -hmm. uh, to get together and figure yeah. out what they've done. Yeah. So um, I, I'd be willing to put some time into that because I think I can help with those pieces. Just to um, outreach. And Susan, you could do that. All right. So if we had a couple, so if, if we were kind of the reps from mm -hmm. CPC, and then I think what we would do is um, and then, uh, take a motion to invite um, representatives from the Ag Commission and the Agricultural Preservation Trust to join us in a working subcommittee mm -hmm. on kind of the details of, of how CPA funds could be used to capitalize the uh, Preservation Trust in the future. Are they an appointed board by the selectmen, pray tell? I'm sorry? That board that hasn't been yet in three years, are they an appointed board by the selectmen? Yes. Yeah, you're gonna have the only, how many on there? I think there are seven or eight. Yeah, so you can't have any more than two, -ish, two on there also. If it's an appointed board, just so we don't go astray of yeah meetings. Yeah, no, yeah, from, yeah. from that side, because they don't do it all the time. I just don't want to have another open meeting, closed meeting session. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, so you only have a couple from your board and, and whoever else was there, if they're appointed. Well, that'll at this point it'll be at random. It's who's gonna who would like to participate. You can't go. You can't exceed a certain amount of people, though. You can't have a right. you can't have like a right. quorum majority. Of the people there, depending on right. So I think it just said two's a cool number. Yeah. Can we do like two from each yeah. of these? Um, and I'll try to get straight on the open meeting, kind of all that kind of stuff. Yeah, just I, I know it's with quorum. You can't have like yes. select, no more too than two selectmen can be in. Right. Five selectmen, yeah. no more than two can be in a room. No more than two park board members can yeah. be in a room discussing something because when you hit the third, you hit the quorum. Yeah. Right. Now you trigger all ethics. sorts of crazy yeah. things. Yeah. Right. Get an right. ethics okay. yeah. violation. Like that. We so if I could have a motion, a point, um, um, Susan and I as volunteers motion. to a working group. Second. <laughs> Discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Excellent. And then a motion to invite representatives from the Agricultural Commission and Agricultural Preservation Trust to join us in a working subcommittee. Make a motion. If they accept, yes. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so let's let's see if we can kind of get the details worked out. Okay. Um, if we know what we're working with, then I think you know we'd be ready to go to town meeting and say we know what we know what we're asking you to do. Um, okay, great. Like Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, project updates. Um, we have so we have uh, five projects that were approved at June town meeting. Um, we have a signed MOU with waterways and the dinghy storage improvement. Um, we do not have anything else signed, so um, we're still waiting. These are all towns, so we're waiting for the town to uh, um, present the Exhibit B, which is the, the, ex the uh, expenditure schedule for the project. And we haven't gotten those back, so they're still outstanding. Um, we do have some project status reports um, that we've received. Do we have copies? Do we have copies of those? That's what this is, right? Yeah. I think Jolly has them. Yeah, the people have them. Okay. If you need one to... I, I've got them. Okay. I'll pass the rest yeah. if they don't have Thank you. I think uh, we all took them. <clears throat> so Dias Landing, um, have a good, de good detail that... Uh, a harbor master is provided um, and they are moving forward on the dais landing mm -hmm. expansion um, they've actually made a fair lot of, a fair amount of progress um, and so their hope that by October um, they can start to do construction the you know in, start the construction which is demolition and then um, um, building the, the uh, expanded um, piers there. So uh, that's moving along. And we have project status report on partners in housing. Um, they, I don't believe, have, they're on the brink of closing. And, and Michael, you, you, you can appreciate yeah. what, it, what it means <laughs> to come almost to the brink and then someone wants another piece of paper. Um, yeah, we've, we've had lots of meetings at the Housing Authority recently over the past, I mean, again, I think we settled it now, but over the summer, there was uh, another gap <laughs> mm -hmm. because the pricing that they had, Partners in Housing, was outdated, and when they had to get it rebid, there was another $500,000 gap. So it's the cost had just kept going up, and I don't think the numbers were being updated enough yeah. to keep up with it. So then... We, as a housing authority, had voted to try to fill that gap, but then, uh, thankfully, through the uh, housing bond bill, there was five hundred thousand dollars allocated directly to the project. So now, that money will be used to take us out because we were just going to be, we were just the bridge so they could close. Yeah. Because you yeah. need to have a balanced source and use to close, yeah. and they didn't have it. So that's why we gave them that bridge. Um, so now the project is able to close, it is able to move forward, and to your point, buddy, I thought it was on the brink a, a month ago, so I, yeah. I, but, I, yeah. but I haven't heard that it has closed yet, so I assume that it's still on the brink. So. Yes, I think, I, think, <laughs> I think so, but um, we've, uh, I know the, the affordable housing restriction, getting the town to sign off on it, um, there are a couple of things like that we know are bubbling, bubbling up. So it looked like, you know, all that little fine print work being done. So hopefully they will close, but everything else is in order. Just get, it's now the papers, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, Heritage Trail um, has been moving forward. Um, I think their piece now, is, and they, um, as you heard, the, the bike path, uh, the pathways committee, they had a, a um, two, bunch of folks Everton's ride Always the Heritage delicious. Trail, um, but DPW is um, 
short on staff, and so I think one of the issues they have is getting all the signs, the markers I just installed. Want to see the park department replace the one from the fire station. Oh, great. Did do it. Oh, did fire. Prior to their soiree down there, so it was all set. Oh, excellent. <laughs> excellent. Yes. They took care of it. Good. That's great. Thank you. Um, so it's a matter of getting um, the rest of these markers installed. So there'll be probably quite a few of them because mm -hmm. we're talking about a 34 mile loop right. um, through town. Um, so it is, it is more than what I think reasonable to expect the volunteers to do. So um, we seem to be at that stage. And um, we did get um, different cultural centers moving forward. They did find asbestos. I think we mentioned that mm -hmm. our last uh, month when we had their report. Um, and so they're reworking their budget to deal with the cost of um, the asbestos removal, which is some tiles and some caulk, window caulking. Um, in the Pascomancet, um, I think we had something on the Pascomancet, but um, they have not closed on the property because there's a title, there's an issue, there's several parcels that are part of this acquisition and there's a title issue with um, that's come up that is being worked on. Um, so the closing is delayed until they can get clear title, get that taken care of. So the state, um, which has committed the, the balance of the funds to acquire the property, um, has agreed to extend their um, uh, grant to the June 2025. So what I would uh, recommend and ask this committee to do is is just to keep things simple for everybody is to go ahead and um, approve the um, extending the termination date of our grant for this property acquisition to be concurrent with the state. So move our term date out to June 30th, 2025. Uh, I think um, it's probably something around May or something like that. I think in April, May is what it currently is. And if we just kind of make it run concurrent, it, it keep everybody, make it simple for everybody. So Make a motion. A motion to um, yeah, run concurrent with the state. To, Extended to uh, June 30th, 2025. Imagine the state's date. Second. Any questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, I'll let uh, Mr. Barber know that. Um, <clears throat> and we, I still need to get project updates on the um, uh, dog park um, and uh, a few other projects. The housing loan rehab program, just where that stands in the housing trust, are uh, some of the ones outstanding. Chris Vitale said he would uh, apologize for them being late and he will get them to us. Uh, may I ask a question about um, yeah. both both things? Uh, the dog park, um, what, what is the hold up on that? Do you, do you know? Uh, right now it's in uh, the selectman's office. Okay. That's all I know. That's where they're going to have the dog park is in the selectman's office. <laughs> probably not a bad place for it. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah, I guess at the I guess uh, documents. I guess Chris Chris has them. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right. Documents. I know they I know they're biting at the bit literally to get to get mm -hmm. moving up there. And uh, have we decided on an uh, amount for the housing? Uh, did we increase that to forty thousand dollars for the loans for the people who need? That's uh, I don't know. So that's part okay. of the update. We we'll need to get us right. where that is. And I know they were redoing their um, their uh, closing documents right. to okay. make sure they are aligned with the CPA. I, I would really like to see that uh, get done because you know winter's coming and. Yep. Some people might need that. Um, we have coming up this this time of year is when we revisit our um, 
fiscal year plan, and so we are, would need to come up with um, an update revision to our annual plan, uh, needs assessment and plan. Um, and it will be for fiscal 26. We have that document. Um, we need to have that ready for December, and then people who are applying for funds in January for the June town meeting um, are informed about what our goals and, and priorities are. So uh, I wanted to check in with folks about how to how we want to proceed on that. Typically, what we have done is we've kind of sent this off to town boards and committees and other people who have done projects with us, like the NRT, and ask them to comment. You know, are there priorities we should be aware of? And then we schedule up part of our meeting as a public hearing for the public to offer comment. Um, so I wanted to check with folks about they, what we, what some towns have done um, is actual surveys and um, um, I always forget uh, the woman's name, first name, who does the community Magnolia? engagement. Was that? Magnolia. Magnolia, yes. Does she go Magnolia or Maggie? Either one. Okay. Yes. Um, so Maggie's able to do something like that. Um, and she would put it up on the town website and but we would have to come up with what would this what are the survey questions that we would want to ask and see if the public some, has some of these surveys aren't it's hit or miss with them unless, unless they people have a personal feeling about it you know? mm -hmm. uh, they've done they've done a couple of them I mean I think right now it's it's worked out well. I don't think we've denied anybody anything by sending it to the the groups mm -hmm. and let them come up with a long term plan. I mean, we usually ask for a one year plan, right? From them, what they're looking. For. Yeah, we ask them to look at our goals and priorities and let us know if they are seeing priorities. Like we typically send something over to the housing authority. We send it over to. What about DRT. asking them for a five year plan? What are they What are they looking at a five year? I mean, because we we're, we're reactive year after year. If uh -huh. we ask them for a five-year, like, what are your goals? What are you looking for down the road? Do you have something, you know, on the side burner that you're trying to do, you're working towards? If, if we're kind of in that loop, then when we start budgeting things mm -hmm. and we start handing out money, we, we know, like, this group here, yeah, right now they're not ready for it, but in three years they're going to be having this monster uh, event that they're trying to do, a monster thing. So I, I like the – I'm a big fan of the five-year plan, the Ed Icaponi five-year plan. I like to see that go out. You know, we do it, the budgets within our uh, departments in town. There's a five-year plan. I'd like to see that also. Why not put it to our partners and say, what do you have? What's your long-term, what's your goals? What are your long-term plans? And maybe that help us to kind of give us some guidance. Mm -hmm. That's a question we haven't asked. Hey, uh, you know, we have typically asked, you know, take a look at what we have. Our, do you, you know, what do you think about our priorities and our strategies and things like that? I think that's that's probably a good thing to use. You know, it's the same people we do over and over again. What's your vision about? Yeah. Because it is trying to, we want to try to stay aligned with, with you know, um, where these organizations are in terms of they're, who are they're, having, they're, taking the lead on things like they're a turnover. There are people who are leaving. Et cetera, et cetera. You know, people have been in, in positions for yeah. a long time. You know, right. after ten years, you kind of lose touch with that next generation. So it's time to kind of maybe maybe you know look yeah. what's down the road. What else is available to us out there? Okay. Well, I'll put the um, request out for comments. Um, I think what we can look forward to is our November meeting being the one where we have public comments. Um, and in December, uh, either November or December, we can finalize what the, our kind of assessment and plan looks like. We have like a targeted list that we send these um, requests out to, right? Yes, yes. Like maybe we can just look at that list. Oh, okay. To, as a group together, and maybe we just edit it. You know what I mean? Add or subtract, depending upon whether or not it's still yes. relevant or whether or not there's someone else out there that we might not have thought of a few years ago that's not on yeah. the list. That's all. You know what I mean? Just yeah, yeah. So, how about this? I can s distribute the list that we have typically used. Mm -hmm. And. <coughs> <laughs> 
and folks can suggest, I would say, like, let me know who you would want to add to the list. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is pretty comprehensive. Well, I'm sure it is. Right, I that just, would be the thing. Yeah. I, don't, no, I can't. Yeah, I'm just trying I, to think of who else you would want to add because, again, it's the same play as over and over again. I'm, I'm thinking through the open meeting law in my head. Yeah. Okay. So I think I could ask that we all um, just who do you want to add? So it requires no discussion amongst us. We will add the people you want to add. Just so, but we'll send the list so I can at least see who's already on the list. Yeah, because I don't exactly. want to add someone who's already there. But you know, I'll just right? No, no. But I'll distribute the list. Okay. You all can so look okay. at the list okay. and then just respond yeah. with who you would want to add. Okay. And our agreement is we'll add who, whatever, whoever yeah. you so, all want to su yeah. suggest. Then we, can, then we can discuss it. Right. And no discussion required. But that's kind of task. We want to build the list. Okay. More the merrier. Which okay. is true. I can do that. Yeah. All right. That's, that's. Yeah, and I, again, I just, the only reason I say that is because I'm thinking through, like you mentioned, the housing authority, but I'm also thinking in the affordable housing space, yeah. there's a lot of other players beyond yeah. the housing authority. Housing authority isn't even a developer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we just manage public housing. That's it. Yeah. So that's why I'm thinking if we really want to attract affordable housing yeah. creation, we, there might be other entities out there that might want to reach out to that might not be on that list. So that's why I would want to take a right. look at it and maybe offer a few I suggestions. Love that. That's, that's a all. great, great suggestion. Okay, so that's our that's our task. We'll add to the list. I'll send it to you all. Add to the list. Mm -hmm. Whoever you want to suggest, we'll get a copy of our current needs assessment and plan with a question of you know reflection on that. Mm -hmm. um, what their priorities they see in their kind of area of interest, um, and what do they see down the road? Well, you know, do they have some in their three to five year vision of how does that, you know, mm -hmm. what should we be aware of in, in thinking about what our plan and what the needs are in Dartmouth and stuff? Okay, that's good. good. Uh, conservation restriction process. Um, I've given you the documents. You have the one with got all of the Brian's um, uh, edits, comments. Uh, he did a great job. It was very, very, very helpful. Um, and um, I've kind of distilled that into um, what's that? That was by email, right? Yes. Yeah, the guidance. Um, well, you could have that. Pat. Is this the guidance for CPA funded open space acquisition? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, um, so basically, um, so this guidance, without all the edit, uh, edits, reflect um, what Brian um, was first, okay. you know, um, yeah. his comments. So I kind of reworked that, made a little bit of change, mm -hmm. the changes that were necessary. But I wanted to be transparent. You could see what he was reflecting. So, um, so I think the key, the key takeaway is that the town has to be the recipient of the funds in these land acquisitions, um, and. The CR, the conservation restriction, um, and and by so when a private entity is acquiring a piece of property and the town is being asked to assist, the way the town assists is by buying the conservation restriction. It, it's that's their fee interest. Mm -hmm. You know, we will give you five hundred thousand dollars, and you will accept this restriction on your land. That's the transaction. We fund the town. The town then uses the money to buy the restriction. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we. That's like that's how it. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the but the town holds the CR. Um, if it's a private entity, yes. Uh, if it's a town that like Pass commands it, the town buys the land, so the money can just go straight to the town. They're buying the land, but 
the land has a restriction put on it, and there that you can't hold a restriction on yourself. And so there, I think in that case, Buzzards Bay holds the restriction. Buzzards Bay in that project did not ask for any endowment, but um, private entities can ask for that and can be awarded that, but they have to do it through an application process for CPA funds. It can't be done afterwards, or it can't be, we'll give the town all the money they need, and then the town can give the CR holder what they need. The town meeting, if it's CPA funds being used, the town meeting has to specifically award, you know, in that case, Buzzards Bay would have submitted the short form application for an endowment um, to carry out their responsibilities for holding the restriction on the past command state land. And town meeting, we would have to approve that, and then town meeting would have to approve the use of funds that way. So this is kind of what kind of describes that. Mm -hmm. um, the next step is um, um, circling back to Conservation Commission. Um, and just one, um, getting their, con their, their agreement to use a template CR, which I think they already have one. Um, and then the second is that um, they would agree to enter into partnerships for holding the CR. Would they have a, if this were a CR on a farm, would they have a separate template for uh, a farm related? Because there's a lot of things you can do. Right. CRs can be very farm forward and they can be, they yeah. can hurt farms. Yeah. I think what we want to work with them is there's a CR template and then there is template language that we would want to see used in agricultural projects. Yeah. Um, the recreational is a little harder because you have to be, the recreation can be a wide range of things. And so on recreational space, sometimes it's all, you know, it's a playground structures and sometimes it's just walking paths. But so we do, um, so in this is, the idea would be to have some template agricultural conditions that we would have the discretion to place in a concept. The, the C, we as a CPC could make that a condition of using the CPA funds to, for the purchase of a CR is it would have to have this piece in it. Um, so I think that the next thing is circle back with the Conservation Commission. I can reach out to them and get on their agenda and say, so. Um, this is how it would work, um, but it needs their participation um, to, one, they may have to apply, but two, that they would be agreeing to work with another entity if they didn't feel they had the capacity to do, to carry out the responsibility of holding the restriction, but we need them to, um, then, like, say if it's a DNRT acquisition, the town had, you can't have a DNRT acquisition and a, and, and a Buzzards Bay holding the, the restriction that the town paid for. That's the piece that the state is saying that we, we're not going to uh, approve those, that arrangement going forward. So it has to be through the town. So that means the Conservation Commission in that kind of a deal would be the holder of the restriction if it's a DNRT purchase. And so then if it's a capacity issue for ConComp, you, they could enter into an agreement with Buzzards Bay to jointly hold the restriction. And Buzzards Bay could apply and get for an endowment to cover the costs of their responsibility. So it could it it's complicated. could work that way. Yeah. It could work that way. And then Buzzards Bay would do the annual walkthroughs and stuff like that. But 
they would be compensated for for doing that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I think uh, I think it's kind of gelled, and the idea now is to get a con con make sure we're all on the same page about how this has to work and what they need to you know in terms of their piece, um, and then we'll work out the template. Okay, and then wrapping up, um, just, you know, the web page, we're working on the GIS map. I gave you a list of the projects I sent and the information that would be on the map. Um, these are projects that have, like, physical locations. Um, and Maggie is going to work on that. Um, talk to Chris, and um, we'll have a link from our web page over to Historical Commission to the inventory of uh, historic properties and the archaeological survey. Um, so little pieces are coming together about um, just providing some more information, transparency to the, to the public about what we're doing. Okay, uh, next meeting, I will not be here, but Jim is gonna chair. I'm gonna be on a road trip. Somewhere in Maryland and Pennsylvania. Oh. I will be at town meeting though. I will not be fishing in <laughs> town meeting. Um, but right. I think on the agenda it'd be good to have the dog park, invite people to come and talk about where that is and how that's gonna proceed. So I, I think, think so, we have yeah. Tim and have some of the dog park folks. Mm -hmm. And then um, the historical commission wants to uh, I think probably be ready to uh, ask for um, doing some more Form Bs and have a, an idea about what the administrative kind of costs would be for that. Um, but I'll talk to Jim and go over the agenda with Jim, but he'll, he'll be here to, to run it. Okay, a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All right, Any discussion? Thank you so much. And uh, <laughs> thank you. don't let the door hit you on the way. <laughs> <laughs>